The old right conservative constitutional position has been uh, that we should avoid war. We should be willing to talk to our enemies and be friends with people and trade with people. And uh, we should remember uh, that uh, there is a Christian just war theory that is very, very important and something that I adhere to. That you just don't go to war as a first resort against people who haven't attacked us. Uh, this just does not fit my personal philosophy. And it, it rejects the whole concept of the Constitution. One of the major reasons we fought the revolution and had a Constitution was to take that power away from the executive branch. And yet we've just, in the Congress, we need. Yes, well, first of all, it's a very old theory because no, no, um, no government in any um, high civilization and in many low civilizations, no government will send young men into battle to kill and be killed without offering some justification for what they are doing. And so just war theory is simply um, an, an argument about what justifications make sense, what are the plausible justifications, and how do we as citizens judge what governments do when they go to war. Um, and the, the Greeks had arguments about when to fight and how to fight, and um, there are biblical accounts of arguments about when to fight and how to fight, and in the Islamic tradition there are arguments. And uh, Just war theory as a, as a doctrine, it comes out of Catholic moral theology in the Middle Ages. So it's a, this is an ongoing and a very long um, um, uh, ongoing argument. Um, and in, 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 in among us, the argument has, um, has a double character. There are arguments about when to go to war. When is it just to fight? This is called jus ad bellum, the justice of war. And, um, and we hang on issues of aggression. It's right to resist an, an attack, just as you could resist on a city street if you were mugged. You could fight back, and that would be a, just, a miniature version of a, of a just war. Um, and it's also just to come to the aid of the victim of aggression, as you might do on a city street if you were brave enough. And that would be a just, a just war. Um, and we've also begun to think that when there is a massacre going on inside a state, when a government is massacring some minority or maybe even not a minority, a majority of its citizens, the way the Cambodian Khmer Rouge regime did, that it is just to go in and stop it by force if, if necessary. So those are the just occasions of war. And then there is justice in war, jus in bello, justice in the conduct of war. And that hangs mostly on issues of non-combatant immunity, of discrimination, of attacking only other soldiers. So it's, it hangs on a very old idea that war is a combat between combatants from which non-combatants should be shielded. Non-combatants means women and children, old men, it means um, medical personnel, it means um, religious officials. It, it, so it, it has even meant, in some circumstances, the merchants who sell weapons to both sides were, in some accounts, treated as non-combatants whom nobody should attack. But basically, for us, it means the civilian population is not, should not be, subject to attack and war. One challenge which I've written about is to add to jus ad bellum, the justice of war, and jus in bello, justice in war, a jus post bellum, justice after war. Once you have, um, once you have defeated the other side, what are your obligations uh, in this, what might be a devastated country? Um, it might be a country, if, if you've overthrown a regime like the Nazi regime in Germany and you've occupied the country, what constitutes just behavior then? Uh, and that's an issue obviously raised, well, we thought it was raised in Iraq, except we never re reached the postbellum we started to talk as if we were after, as if it was after the war, but it wasn't and isn't. 
Um, so uh, in Iraq, we're still confronted with in bello arguments about the conduct of uh, of war. But that's that's an important question, and you and you can see it in the way um, um, in in something like the NATO protectorate in Kosovo. We, we fought a mini war with the Serbs, and and Kosovo was then put under a kind of NATO protectorate with UN authorization. And uh, and then what should NATO do? We, you, we have soldiers in Kosovo. What should they be doing? What constitutes um, a just a just conduct when you're occupying somebody else's country?